So in this video we're going to be talking about alternative camping gear, specifically lightweight camping gear which is also less bulky. I'm at A247 with General Manager Paul Wood and remember that you, um, there is a discount code you can use for anyone um, under my name, L2SFBC, and that will get you a discount off A247 equipment. So Paul, thanks for um, allowing me just to wander through the shop and pick out some of the um, right. cool stuff here. Welcome. Let's let's um, talk about, um, I guess, why this is important because it's been my observation over the last sort of um, 15 years ago, no one really did a GVM upgrade. Mm. Um, and now everyone's got a GVM upgrade almost as a matter of course. And we're taking more and more stuff. Now, I'm not gonna tell people don't take things because it's your money, your life, you do what you want. What I wanna do here is try and point out that this, the gear you take doesn't need to be really heavy and bulky. There are smaller and lighter alternatives. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And look, it's, it, it really comes down to as well about deciding on compromise and where, where you might want to have weight and then where there's other places where you can really save on weight because you just don't need to take so much stuff and the stuff that you do take can be compact, collapsible, lightweight materials um, and it will do the same job, even a better job because it is lightweight. Yeah, and there's always new innovations coming out, even just coming into the shop today. I mean, as you know, this is kind of my job. I was going, oh, this is new. I hadn't seen this, and it's um, it's pretty cool. So, um, Paul, talk to us about what, what this is. Sure. So, so this is by Cedar Summit, and it's a nesting uh, storage uh, food storage container system. So it's uh, it has multiple uh, pots that fit inside one another. I can get it out. Of course, it's brand new. Well, of course, you're on camera now. It's going to be difficult. Yeah, right? no, yeah. that's right. Um, and essentially, what it is, you've got two uh, sort of sizes. One that can be used uh, as a, a large size, yep. uh, like a like a bowl. But the benefit here is, is that this can be used as a noodle bowl, a cereal bowl. Once you're done with that, if you've got some leftovers, you've got a lid that yeah. seals really well, and yeah. that even if you just pop that back in your fridge, you know that's not gonna that's not gonna break. And, I can't collapse it because it's so well sealed. Mm. So it's doing multiple jobs and then you've got a smaller one that again you could do yeah. soup, noodles, other things in it. Yeah. Mm. I, I actually take a couple of these hiking, slightly smaller ones and that's my coffee cuts and I just collapse them down like so when I'm done. Um, and it's just because you imagine that, that in a hiking pack is actually quite bulky. So you collapse it and of course it will never collapse exactly right on camera but it does collapse mm -hmm. um, down, down to quite a small size there. So yeah, I, I, li I like that. Um, um, again, it, it's it's just saving bulk, and I think um, I think that's important. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. So that's that one. Now, speaking of, I covered this in my lightweight camping video, but. Um, uh, these are super lightweight cutlery sets to the point where they've even drilled holes in them and you think, oh well you don't need to, um, you will save some weight there, not a huge amount, but every little bit helps and it's also relatively small as well. Sometimes in campers you don't necessarily get the um, cutlery space so yeah, pretty handy to see those as well. Yeah, yeah, so they're made out of a lightweight aluminium and then there's a, a variety of different materials that go from super lightweight to you know ultra lightweight even to titanium. So you can sometimes you can go a little bit too far with these things, but uh, you know, just something like that is. Uh, yeah, if you want to know how to go too far, join the. Um, take a look at what the people who do ultralight backpacking are like. They're like, oh my god, this is an extra half a gram. Uh, half a gram. You are yeah. excommunicated, right? I mean, you, you can take things to yeah, extremes. That. And here's another collapsible. Um, I, I own one of one of these. It's a um, Cedar Summit collapsible kettle. Um, I really like it because hey, it collapses down. And it's got a pour spout there. Um, Paul, you're saying there's some other couple of good features around it as well. Yeah. So so um, uh, because of its shape and the way that it, it collapses upwards, now this can go directly on top of your you know, gas burner and the shape of it allows that even if any flames lick up the side, it's not going to you know, attack or, 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 or you know, uh, have an adverse effect on any of this. So the other thing with anything collapsible and what we all have a tendency to do is, is that if we have a kettle, We'll just put stuff in it. So we'll mm. stuff and stack and fill it full of other things, which means when you want to go and use it, you've got to pull all that stuff out and stuff it somewhere. Whereas, you know, with something collapsible, you keep it nice and collapsed, you keep it like that, you know, put the lid on it, and that's how it stores and, mm. and stuffs in your, in your kit. Yeah, I should also mention that um, this uh, band goes over the top just yep. to keep the lid um, intact mm. like so. Now, 
Urbe Remis, not to mention the disadvantages, and this is aluminium, and it's obviously rubber um, plastic on, on the side there, so it's not going to retain the heat like a cast iron um, kettle would do. Obviously, you boil that, and then it's got the heat. It's going to be hot for the next week. This loses heat very, very quickly. So um, with all of this stuff, there's pros and cons. Again, I'm not going to tell you what to do, just give you the information. You, you can make the call. Now this. I got one of these as well, not this one, I've actually got a Seed Summit one, um, a pillow. Now we all know how big pillows are, particularly if you're um, you know, camping with a family of four, it's just like, oh my God, it's just a lot of, but look at how tiny it is, it's great. And um, they are surprisingly comfortable, wouldn't you say, Paul? Yeah, that's right. Um, and so we carry this pillow because of its unusual design, which it has uh, sort of grooves that essentially center your head in the pillow mm. on, on your mattress. So even if you move around on a night time and the pillow moves around, it moves around with you because your head stays centered so it seems like it would be unusual but it's actually a surprisingly comfortable pillow mm. and it's the size of a matchbook yeah i know and you can just take four i mean look at the bulk of this compared to four um normally large pillows it's yeah, um yeah Take yeah, it, it is. It is surprisingly good. Again, this stuff we're learning from the hiking. Right? Now, now this. Um, Paul pointed this out to me. And I was going, okay, it's, it's another lamp. So what? Impressed me, but actually, I ended up fairly impressed. So, <laughs> yeah. So I actually really love this. It's by Darch, um, and the reason why it sort of adds some, you know, some some extra pizzazz to to a regular lamp is a. It's got a solar charger on the top, so kids love to leave a lamp on, and the lamps like this charge overnight. But during the day, sat on the, you know, sat on the camp table it'll recharge uh, does it recharge fully over a day with that tiny uh, pulp uh, pr probably not probably yeah. not it's really more of like a uh, call it like a trickle charge so yeah, if okay. it was fully discharged it's not going to fully recharge yeah. it yeah. Um, yeah. but it does also have USB rechargeable so you can just plug that into any USB port and recharge mm -hmm. it uh, the design of the collapsible uh, shroud is actually really quite clever because you can actually adjust where you want light so if you want light to beam out in all directions like a direction you know a big fill lamp it will do that or if you want to just make it a tight directional lamp you just, just to show us that turn it on yeah let's turn it on so there's your directional directional lamp and then when you pull it out you get a a much more yeah. sort of you know, scattered lamp. So yeah. depending on what you need, you can adjust that simply by collapsing or, or you know, yeah. uh, pulling it out. So um, in terms of color, you can change the color, uh, you know, to, to a nice or warmer color, which people generally prefer, um, and a, a, a dimmer color. And then you can even turn it into a nice little fl flickering candle color. How romantic. Which is so romantic. Oh, poor. Look at us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so you could have it that way up or that way up. Is it magnetic? No, no. Okay. So, so um, that's what the... Oh, yeah. One thing I like about this, it, it's it's not closed loop, so you can just hook it in there. So I hate it when, it, when it's a closed loop. You've got to find something, find you know, something to hook to it around. It. Yeah. yeah. And it also goes down flat as well, which is something else which, you know. Um, yeah, so that, that's... that's um, Okay, I'm a, I quite like this. Um, yeah. It's not the smallest lamp on the market, but no. it's, a, it's actually multifunctional, and I like the fact it, it goes um, up and down. Yep. All right, now, this bit, this is um, actually a shovel, and it's small and light, which in things close to my heart, so let's have a look inside of that. Yep. And um, Paul said to me, I looked at this and said, what do, what do we need this for? Is it for fires? Because, um, you know, I've never carried a, a, a rake when I've been camping. Um, I am pretty minimalist, but, you know, even so, a rake was... And what did you say, Paul? Yeah, so it's... Uh, normally you would think, well, shovels are, you know, if I'm going to dig a hole, I need to, you know, dig a toilet, or I need to dig a car out, you're going to carry a shovel. Everyone generally carries a shovel. Yeah. But a rake can be really useful around the campsite because you can... I think it extends one, even one further than that, doesn't it? We'll pull out and pull out the hammer. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, too, too far. Too far. Yep. So a rake can be really useful around the campsite because A, if you get to a campsite, sandy, sticks everywhere, you want to put your mat down or your tent down, you can rake it up really yeah, easily. exactly. If you've got a car that's stuck and there is sand bogged under the car and you need to clear the suspension hangers or the, the yeah. diffs or the... Trying to get a shovel in. You know, that, that was the kicker for me because when you said sand recovery, I thought, yeah, you know what? Actually, this, because when you've got a shovel, you can't, you can't really get in there and do that, it doesn't work. But with this, you can just go and pull it out. Pull it in. Yeah, so. Um, it's also a lot easier yeah. on you. You don't yeah. have to lift yeah. the sand 
and move it away. You can actually, yeah. you can oh, actually just rake it away. I get it, because in effect, that's what you do with your hand. You sort of do that with your hand anyway. Yeah, that's and right. Put it in. So, yeah. yeah, as soon as you said that, it's fine. But see, what I like is the multifunctional. Mm. Um, the fact that, see, if it was just take a rake, I'm gonna, we're not going to take a rake just for that. That's but right. because this is a shovel and a rake, so the only, the only extra weight is, is just ahead of it. That's it. I'm going, okay, you know, um, for, for what that is, um, I'll, I'll take that, particularly because the rest of it is so light. It's, it's, it's um, lightweight aluminium. So, and I like the fact that it's got this on the end. You can sort of give it a bit of a pull as opposed to just that. So, yep. yeah. Um, so this I is like the, this. the Shovel Buddy by Navigator. Shovel Buddy. Yep, okay. and it has the rake head attachment. So you can just get it as the shovel, yep. um, and then you can also add the rake head as an yep. attachment. Now, the other thing I like about this, and this is sort of one of my standard um, things about any given bit of equipment, is it comes with a bag. Mm. I hate equipment that comes in plastic packaging. Yeah. You undo it. Okay, now what do I do if I've got to find a bag? It's got a bag, right? I, I like the fact. And it's yeah. also got a bag with two zips and a um, handle at the top. So um, very keen on the bag. All right, now when we're um, camping or moving around, you always want some form of heat. And um, I carry something similar to this in my caravan. Now my caravan has a gas bottle. It actually has um, a perfectly good st um, stove burner. So why do I I carry something like this which attaches to that as a stove? Well the answer is two reasons. First of all I can very quickly put this together and get it going and pretty much this will have half boiled um, the kettle by the time I've got around of lighting the um, actually lighting the flame to the burner on on my um, caravan so it's much quicker. Secondly it's redundancy because um, I can, uh, if there's something wrong with, with the gas on the caravan, then I've got this as a backup. And it also just goes to show how small things can be. I mean, look at how light and small this is. Put that in there like, like so. You can put one pan on it, put two of them side by side, you've got two. You don't necessarily need a massive gas bottle and a massive burner. Now, there's, there's pros and cons to it, of course, but I'm just saying you can get away with something smaller and, and, and lighter. So, Paul, anything else to say about this? No, look, other, other than the fact that, you know, the uh, these sorts of um, burners, you know, they use a nicer butane fuel. It's very hot, very good burning in cold weather as well as, you know, warm weather. Um, and you can use these gas bottles for lots of different things, you mm. know, a, a thermocell or a mos you know, mosquito thermocell or any of those types of things. And they're tiny and compact. Um, I, I just think they're they're a great thing to have, mm. uh, especially if you've got, like I have, which is a, a camper van. There's no kitchen inside, the kitchen's all outside. I've got to pull it out, I've got to lift and open and fold and do those sorts of things. The weather's terrible, I can just bring it inside, open a window and you know i can Actually, quickly quickly yeah. cook up breakfast inside you know and then it's this big um as opposed to a big click clack stove that mm. take all those cheap you know butane bottles it's mm. this is a much better solution actually that's what i was going to say as well i forgot that thanks um my, my caravan actually has only outside cooking so again if the weather's terrible mm. um i can just put this inside and because um now there's obviously a safety issue with using gas inside but this is so small for such a brief period of time in such a big enclosed area mm. then it's fine um the safety issue is more sort of a, a big um, a heater gas heater running, yeah. which you go which you leave on for a long period of time uses a lot of gas then you go to sleep and then you don't wake up as opposed to using this for two minutes to, to boil, boil a kettle, kettle or something yeah. like that so that's in, entirely different but when you do do that do open a, um, a vent or something like, like that as well yep. all right so chairs everyone needs camping chairs and we've all seen the massive director chairs which weigh about 20 kilograms and um, they've got everything apart from a Stanley Kubrick written on the side there and they've got sort of of, um, joysticks on the side and <laughs> Christ knows what else there. Pretty much got wheels. All you could do is put an engine to them and then you could just drive it. But these are small and lightweight. Now, um, I'm 88 kilograms, um, um, clothed, um, and with um, and, and six feet, and I'm fairly comfortable in this. Mm -hmm. Your height? I'm six foot five and I'm more than 100 kilograms. More than 100, north of 100, yep. Um, but look, and this, this is a small chair, and it is designed as a small chair, but for my weight, for my size, this is actually a pretty comfortable chair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, if I was hiking, going out on a day pack, if I was trying to fit tight, you know, a bunch of them into my car in a very small space, it's a chair, yeah. I'm not on the ground. Yeah, exactly. Now, the, the thing which I miss is I, um, I'm a sort of a workaholic, so I've often got a laptop with me, and I'll put my laptop down so I don't have that. But um, mm -hmm. 
and over here there's a little table um, as well so that could be my kind of table there if I don't really like whoever it is I'm sitting next to I could just create a bit of, bit of space there mm. so I don't need to sit next to them and um, um, this is pretty cool that just literally pulls out like that and then um, you've got yourself a little table and it's all aluminium so um, pretty pleased about that as well and it was go straight back in like that and you could even say it's um, from War of the Worlds if you're into sci-fi or something like that you could <laughs> you know late at night campfire you could just um, pretend it's coming down take me to your leader it's a very vivid imagination oh you, you, you what goes on in my head you don't want to know about it but yeah so there you go it's, it's a camp table as well as a um, UFO toy oh, good stuff. Mm. it's not a frisbee it's no 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 it's, as a frisbee. Look, I mean from an aerodyn <laughs> aerodynamics perspective Probably not great. I don't think it would be this. Never mind. All right. Um, okay. So, so that that's that. Now let, let's put these chairs away so we can see what uh, what they yeah, look they like. So. You're out of practice. I'm out of practice. Yeah. I've actually got one of these chairs, but. Um, <laughs> I don't use it. It's because we were racing, right? You just didn't yeah. Know. Well, I didn't, I didn't want to embarrass you, you know, in, in your own shop. In your own shop. That, that, no, well, that, that's the problem. You've, you've done yeah. a good job of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll put that one up. Yeah, so the, as you can see, it will take longer than a normal chair to put away. Um, so there's never a um, sort of po there's never there's a compromise there's somewhere. There's compromise, yeah. There's a compromise. Yeah, there's always somewhere. a compromise. And um, fundamentally, getting it back in its bag sometimes can be. If I'd have packed it properly, that probably would have helped. But um, quite possibly. Yeah, that would work there. Now, whilst I'm doing this, never force a zip. So I'm just holding it tight like that. There we go. All right, and. Um, much less bulky. In mm. fact, this, this compared to two there. Yeah, okay, that's a lot less bulky. Mm. Yeah, but um, I think comfort-wise, I've tried both of them. I'd say this one's probably as comfortable as as the larger one, and it's cheaper as well and um, lighter and less bulky. So yeah, that's it. Okay, now we're going to look at tables. All right, so tables. We all need tables, and um, this one is another Helinox table. Again, extremely light. Um, it's not your guard, you're going to be a dining table, but it's very light, very um, small and easy to pack away. And what have we got here, Paul? Uh, so this is the expanded table by Frontrunner. Again, it's a, this is still an aluminium table, so it is a lightweight table. Um, and it does have a reasonable size uh, sort of dinner or, or top surface. Um, does fall down, but again, it's one of those ones. Robert's going to spend you know, five, five minutes sort of packing away this table. And whilst we are having a race, I can actually um, take the time. Yeah, exactly. This table will pack up a lot faster than that table, but it doesn't pack down as compact. So the other thing uh, about compact and about space is, is that whilst these tables might weigh arguably similar, the Helinox is going to be lighter. It depends on the space that you have and how often you want to get out that piece of equipment. Mm. Now, going through this, this uh, process of packing or folding away the table is going to take some time. Do you want to do that every time you pull it out? Or, with a table like this, now we'll do it. There you go. Now it's packed away. Yeah. So, in terms of understanding what it is that your need is, um, still going lightweight, still going lightweight materials, but something that you can set up in a, you know, a really short period of time um, and have a table ready to go yeah. is, is pretty, pretty substantial. Right, and I think that's really important because it's not necessarily the bulk, it, it's the shape of it as well. Mm. And for um, that shape you had there, that can so easily slot into many compartments in the four-wheel drive or lay flat on a roof rack, etc. Whereas this, um, when it goes in its box, just couldn't do that um, and it is it is longer and also I'm a big fan of what I term friction of camping because if it takes two minutes to set up your your, your camper uh, your chair two minutes to set up your table etc that's 10 minutes and then that just starts to degrade the whole camping experience but the right to that if, if you've got a lot of stuff which is lightweight and doesn't take up a lot of bulk you tend to be able to get to it quicker so it's not just a setup time it's actually what I what I ter term um, 
key to, key to sit down time. So when you start to say, I need X, how long does it take you to go to your car, get it, bring it out, set it up and use it? And that's where I have a problem with people talking about the you know, tent setup time because they only start the tent setup time when you <laughs> the tent's you know, right in front of you. Well, if you've got to get it off your roof rack as opposed to pull it out of the back of the car, to me, that's mm. all part of your setup time. Yeah, it's the same goes for like a swag or something like that. So whilst the swag may take a small amount of time, all my bedding's in there, all my, you know, my pillows exactly. are in there, all that sort of, you know, a tent setup time, sure, I've got a big empty space where the tent now stands, Yeah. but what about my camp mats and my kids' camp mats and the pillows and the, and the sleeping bags and the, you know, the clothes bag? It takes, a, it, it does take time to do those things. So. Right, exactly. So if you're gonna compare a swag to a tent, you've gotta compare a swag to a tent plus sleeping bag, plus everything else, plus yeah. cot or stretcher if you're gonna use one, mm. and then it's a fair comparison. Yeah. Mm. All right, Paul, so thanks very much for taking the time to um, allow me to play, play in your shop of goodies here. No Hope nice. you guys found that um, useful. Remember that there is a um, discount code, L2SFBC, and for Patreon supporters, there's an extra discount as well. Contact me um, for those details through the Patreon messaging system. If you've got any questions about the gear, please use the comment um, section. Thank you for watching, and Paul, thank you again. No worries. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Thanks for coming.